If you're looking to improve your aim, then make sure to check out Control Freak and use the code OGXRAYS to get 10% off all the products. Link in the description below. Yo guys, what's up, it's Rays. Welcome back to another video. So I wanted to talk about a couple of stories. Uh, one, the PlayStation 5 sales and how it's doing and it actually connecting to the Nintendo Switch because this is just interesting stuff. And then the other one is going to be uh, an update on Gotham Knights, uh, which is a game that was supposed to be coming this year, but it looks like it has been delayed. So let's go ahead and jump into this. If you guys enjoy the video, drop a like. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe with notifications on. And if you guys want to support the channel directly, you guys can do so by checking out my sponsors, Control Freak and Scoff. I use them every day when I'm playing. Kodo GX Rays gets you a discount over there or through my Amazon influencer page, if you guys would much rather do it that way. Also creator code OGX Rays in Fortnite. Super, super appreciated. Let's jump into it. So we've got a couple of kind of big stories. So the first one I guess we'll talk about is going to be PlayStation 5 sales. Looks like it has officially lifetime sold uh, 6 million consoles. Now, not just that, but it actually goes into the breakdown of what it was like in these past, I believe the past month, or uh, we'll see it, the articles here, but uh, needless to say, it'll be interesting uh, for you guys to see where the Switch actually is positioned on this list. So the Nintendo Switch was a best-selling console with 423,187 units sold for the week ending March 6. According to VG Charts estimates, the Switch has now sold an estimated 80.79 million units lifetime. The PlayStation 5 sold an estimated 200,000 units uh, to bring its lifetime sales to 6.08 million units. The Xbox Series X sold 103,000 units to bring their lifetime sales to 3.94 million units. The PlayStation 4 sold an estimated 43,366 units, that's interesting as well. And the Xbox One sold 19,000 units, and the Nintendo 3DS sold only 1,453 units. Nintendo Switch sales compared to the same week a year ago are up 137,453 units, or 48.1%. The PlayStation 4 is down 147,000 units, which is about 77%, which is still interesting that the PlayStation 4 is still selling as well as it is. And the Xbox One is down 69,000 units, or 78%. The 3DS is down 10,000 units, woof, that's rough, which is 87%. Uh, and again, keep in mind, there's no more games that are coming out for the Nintendo 3DS. There's no more exclusives. There's no, pretty much the 3DS is done. Game over for the 3DS. Uh, so I'm not surprised that it only sold a thousand units uh, over the course of a week. Well, and I, I'm shocked that these are the numbers uh, that they had literally up to that point in, in a single week. I can't believe that's actually a thing. But if you guys see over here, we actually see what the numbers were that past week. Uh, and also the lifetime sales. So we have the Switch, like we mentioned, 400,000, uh, and it's at 80,000 or 80 million. The PlayStation 5, 200, and it's at 6 million. The Xbox Series X is at 3.9 million total, and then 100,000 a week ago. So it looks like it's actually selling about half as many consoles as the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't know if any of this has to do with how readily available those consoles are, because again, if the PlayStation 5 is just manufacturing and selling consoles at a faster rate than say the Xbox Series X, then maybe these numbers aren't really uh, telling the whole story, but it's still interesting to see that the PlayStation 5 is doubling the sales of the Xbox Series X, and you can even see that in the lifetime sales. It's not really half of it, uh, but it's about, I'd say uh, like 60% uh, more uh, in terms of how much more it has sold. The PlayStation 4, 43,000 units, again, still shocked that we're selling that many, and it sold a total of 115 million units lifetime so far. The Xbox One is at 19 million or 19,000, followed by 49 million lifetime. That's actually kind of crazy uh, that it only, wow, it did less, less than half of what the PlayStation 4 did. And the 3DS is at 75 million units. So it's towards the end of that life cycle, but still pretty cool. And also shocking to see that the Nintendo Switch is at 80 million units lifetime. Uh, just because that thing's been out in 2017, so it's been what about four or four years already coming here in March. Uh, already, actually, in March, March 3rd was its uh, fourth year anniversary. So, four years into the Nintendo Switch console, it's still selling insane. It sold, it really picked up during the pandemic. Now, there's rumors that there is going to be a new Nintendo Switch model that outputs 4K that has a seven inch screen that you can buy later this year that they're going to announce. Nintendo's being really coy about it and saying that they have no plans to reveal a new console anytime soon. But uh, all reports and indications are saying that we're going to get a new Nintendo Switch version, a new model, towards the end of this year that is a 7-inch 
uh, LED screen or OLED screen. I'm not really sure what kind of screen it was, but it was seven inches. It's bigger than the one that you have, the default one that you dock, uh, and it can output 4K when docked. So I'm definitely gonna get one of those guys. So they already are gonna have another massive spike in sales. And uh, I don't know if it's gonna beat the lifetime sales of the Wii, but it's definitely looking like on paper, it will surpass the, the Wii in terms of sales. And I'm happy for them, man. They were like struggling after the Wii U came out and uh, Iwata was like taking a lot of flack for that. He passed away and now the Switch kind of being his legacy, doing so well just makes me so happy. So good for them, good for them. So there we go, guys. The uh, PlayStation 5 is selling really well right now, I think. Uh, the Xbox Series X, again, I don't know between those two if it's just how readily available the console is, but uh, they're both selling out like as soon as they come out. So I think it might just be a manufacturing issue, uh, but we'll see. But at least for now, it looks like Xbox Series X is not necessarily keeping keeping pace with them but still kind of not falling too far behind uh so we'll see what happens with that as the console is more readily available for people to purchase all right so the next one gotham knights has been delayed uh, and this was mentioned today according to the game's official twitter gotham knights is uh, being delayed uh, to ensure quality upon the release the game was announced last year and was set to come out uh, sometime in 2021 no particular reason was given for the delay other than the studio would like to ensure that the game performs to their expectations quote we are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Thank you to our amazing fans for our tremendous support on Gotham Knights. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months, unquote, read the tweet. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, I'm not super bummed about this, mostly because uh, I thought Gotham Knights was going to be a straight up, like another Gotham game, like, you know, uh, Arkham Knight, etc. But it uses four people at any time. And this is just my opinion, but this is like what I have felt Anytime a game goes from a single protagonist as the main character to four different breaks up in the four things, uh, you play as four different characters, you can play multiplayer with those characters, it always feels like it diminishes the quality of the game, and it's just not as good. I I've always felt like they've, uh, like that has happened with games that were supposed to be single player experience narrative games that just kind of break off and try to do something different. I'm not saying it, it never works, okay? Four Swords, like Legend of Zelda Four Swords was a fun game, but Again, it's 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 difficult in my opinion to really try to make a game that comes out that has four different characters you can play as of multiplayer and all this stuff. And it just, it, it always gets too jumbled up and convoluted. So personally, I'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff, but I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. And the trailer looked actually pretty fun, but again, it always worries me when that happens, but it looks like it has been delayed uh, at least by a year. And I say good for them. If we learn anything from Cyberpunk, uh, you know, give yourself time, man. Or at least if you just can't have a game perform well on a console, just don't release that game on that console, man. Like, I know it, it sucks and you have contracts and stuff, but th these guys over at uh, at uh, Cyberpunk just ruined their reputation. Uh, a lot of, just tarnish your good name, and a lot of people are really, really upset on them, even to this day. Okay, so hopefully uh, this delay helps them and the game comes out and it's uh, immaculate, beautiful 10 out of 10 game. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, guys, if you guys are new. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on. And if you guys want to support the channel directly, you guys can do so by checking out my sponsors. Control Freak Scoff, I use them every day when I'm playing. Koto GXers gets you a discount link down below to them. Uh, or my Amazon Influencer page, which you guys can find down below as well. Give me a follow over on Twitter. If you guys want to interact with me, say what's up or just see what I'm up to. And you guys have an amazing day. Take care, guys. I'm out. Peace.